it had two options, basically. The first was to provide advice and support, as Geoffrey actually said in the introduction to the JVL report. And there it could have treated its legal framework flexibly. And it did that in so far as it, it talked about Chakrabarti's work. Um, but the alternative which was that it could do a competent legal investigatory job, i.e. applying the law. Essentially, the EHRC decided not to use the first approach, and it failed spectacularly on the second. In fact, from the moment it launched an investigation into, and I quote, anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, it was pretty much doomed. Why? Now, I'm a danger of turning into a one-trick pony here, but I have to repeat over and over and over again because the exercise was built on a concept with neither legal meaning nor even an agreed popular or academic understanding. We now have three modern competing definitions of anti-Semitism. The IHRA, Nexus, which I'll bet most of you have not heard of, and the Jerusalem Declaration. The key thing is none have any legal status. Even if you, me, the Board of Deputies, um, Uncle Tom Copley and all, thinks that a particular image is anti-Semitic, it still might not constitute um, evidence of a prohibited act and hence be unlawful under the Equality Act. And what we need to remember is that's the law the EHRC was supposed to be enforcing. Following this foundational problem, it was not surprising to see the Commission's joyful embrace of the Equality Act harassment clauses. And I want to say something very important here. These are frighteningly broad. Again, if we ever get a, another government which is left of this one, I think it should be our priority to take another look at those clauses because they really are in the wrong hands, like the EHRCs, a serious threat to free speech.